Hey everyone, how's it going? So, a while ago, almost three years to the day, I decided to play this game using only Rattata. And today, we're gonna use its evolved form Raticate. Now, realistically, Rattata and Raticate are very, very similar, but there are some important differences that are going to help out Raticate. First off, its base stats are not good, but way better than Rattata's. And the second thing that's going to help Raticate is how important that first thing was. Nah, in seriousness, unlike some other fully evolved Pokemon, Raticate really doesn't get any other moves. It gets Hyper Beam, but it's locked behind the game corner, so we're not going to be using it. With all that said, I'm sure you're curious how a normal Pokemon will take down Brock. Now, my original plan was to level up all the way to level 14, where you get a base 80 power Hyper Fang on a normal Pokemon. Unfortunately, the only way to get to level 14 quickly and efficiently is to battle Brock and lose a few times. But sometimes, when you do that, you might end up winning. I realize that battle may have gone quick, but this is a strategy we've used a bunch when a Pokemon has a defense lowering move to wait out Geodude, tank a couple tackles, and then use a much more powerful physical attack, which does decent damage. Realistically, I thought Onyx would knock me out, but I got incredibly lucky. You even noticed me maybe pausing for a second, just because I couldn't believe how lucky I was getting. Onyx could have used Tackle at many points and just ended the battle, but hey, we'll take it. In reality, it only saves about three in-game minutes or so. We were very close to level 14 anyway, as evidenced by the fact that we hit level 14, after we defeat Brock. But yeah, that's one gym badge down. Typically, Rival 2 is easier than Misty, so we're gonna battle Rival 2 next, and with Hyper Fang, while it's not as good as Body Slam, it's almost as good. Rival 2, as always, is gonna lead with Pidgeotto, and the key to Pidgeotto is just outspeeding, which we don't do because of Quick Attack, but we knock it out in two hits, meaning no Sand Attack. Hyper Fang can still miss. It's only 90% accurate, but when it hits, it deals a ton of damage, nearly one-shotting even Squirtle, and because Raticate can inexplicably learn both Bubble Beam and Water Gun, we don't even have to worry about Rock-type trainers going forward, which is really, really nice. Now, speaking of Bubble Beam, let's go get it by defeating Misty. Misty leads with Staryu as always, and hopefully we one-shot. We do. This is another reason you battled Misty second, because look, we got a critical hit Water Gun, which does more than Bubble Beam and Water Gun, but we're able to tank those, despite the fact we don't have great special. If we battled Misty right away, we probably would not have been able to do that, which is why if you can, it's important to defeat Rival 2 first, because if you defeat him, you get a bunch of really easy trainers, giving you lots of experience, making Misty much, much easier. Speaking of much, much easier, Rival 3 is typically much, much easier than Rival 2, because you get access to Body Slam, but because we already had Hyper Fang, I think it's going to be the same degree of easy, meaning easy first try victory. Rival 3 leads with Pidgeotto for the second to last time. Quick attack once again, but this time we one-shot. We also one-shot Raticate, we outspeed and one-shot Kadabra, and while we don't one-shot Wartortle, it really doesn't matter. Easy, easy victory, and I don't think Lieutenant Surge will be all that much more difficult, because the one stat Raticate kind of excels at or at least relative to its other stats, is its speed. We should outspeed and one-shot the first two Pokemon, the level 21 Voltorb and the level 18 Pikachu. Raichu maybe won't be, but another really good thing about the Rattata line is they can both learn Gen 1 Dig, which is a base 100 power move. That's gonna help out immensely versus Agatha, and also helps versus Raichu, making it an easy first try victory. So far, Raticate has demolished every challenge that's come in its way. Even the famous hiker with two Geodudes and Graveler are no match for Raticate. That means we can proceed straight to Celadon City and head to the Rocket Hideout in order to battle Giovanni. My moveset is the same because why change anything? Bubble Beam knocks out Onyx and Rhyhorn in one hit. As for Kangaskhan, its defense is pretty good and it is going to take two hits. In fact, but you know what else has helped me defeat Giovanni? Today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. That's right, I got a sponsor. And like Giovanni, there are lots of nefarious people out there that would like nothing more than to figure out what exactly you're doing on the internet, even if it's just looking up Pokemon movesets. Well, I have good news for you. 
like Raticate, being able to dig out of game corner, ExpressVPN similarly allows you to avoid those prying eyes and have some peace of mind. In fact, I myself, by the time this video comes out, will be on vacation and had to use public Wi-Fi. Well, thanks to ExpressVPN, I was able to securely browse the internet and look up new Pokemon strategies without having to worry about people possibly taking my ideas for their videos. It turns out, unlike in Pokemon Red and Blue, the bad guys in real life don't all wear Team Rocket uniforms, and they're not out to steal your Pokemon. They might want my credit card and password information. But thanks to ExpressVPN, even on public Wi-Fi, I was able to browse the internet safely and securely. If this is something that sounds interesting to you, then good news, you can go to expressvpn.com slash jros, and the QR code has been in the bottom of the video. You will get three free months, so I really recommend checking it out. It's about as easy as the battle with Erica that we're gonna do right now. So Erica leads with her victory bell, and I didn't think it would be a one KO. However, remember, Raticate has really good base speed, so we get that crit and we get the one at KO. We don't get a crit on Tangela, but that's okay. Tangela can't do very much to us. And we don't get a crit on Vileplume, but we tank a Petal Dance very well. And as I just said, Erica was a pretty easy battle, as will be Rival 4 after we do our shopping, as well as get the HM for Fly, of course, as always. Rival 4 is quite a snore. I don't know why I show him, it's such a bore. But in order to get this video 20 minutes or more, I show this battle, which I deplore. Well, I actually don't deplore it, we won, easily. I like it, it just rhymed. Anyway, that's it for what I consider the unofficial first half of the game. Now we have to deal with Koga, Sabrina, Rival Fival, Blaine, and Giovanni. They can be pretty easy because you get access to a bunch of new TM moves. They can also be the hardest part of the game. What will they be for Raticate? Well, against Koga, we have Dig. It's super effective and base 100 power. And doesn't one-shot Coughing, who uses Smokescreen. And after, wow, that's a lot of misses, I decide to reset. So that's kind of bad. Special attacks would definitely be better. I guess not on Raticate, but yeah. Anyway, we'll try that again. Does not look like it's a range, although if we leveled up a bit more, it would be close to one. Muck is thus going to be a two at KO. In fact, we need to use two digs. I used Body Slam, but that probably was the wrong move. Coughing number two basically knocks me out. And unless Weezing uses self-destruct here or an X attack, we will win. I was gonna say we're gonna lose, but turns out it can use an X attack. Hooray. And that, by the way, only works because in Generation 1 only, items don't have increased priority, which is really strange. At least not when used by the opponent. Okay, so Koga was shockingly both more difficult and then easier than I thought he would be. So Rival Fival seems to be the next most logical person to battle, but he might be really, really tough. Well, he leads with Pidgeot. Our best move is still Body Slam. It goes for Quick Attack, which is fine, actually. That crit probably mattered. All right, well, Growlithe, I can go for Dig. That will one-shot, two down. Execute is a one-shot with a crit. Alkazam is a one-shot. And Blastoise, we get a crit. And then Bubble. You know what? I'll take that. We got a little bad luck at the beginning, some pretty good luck at the end. That works. First try victory against Rival Fievel. Not bad, not bad at all. So now we only have three major battles left before the end game. Sabrina, Blaine, and Giovanni, and we have super effective moves. Well, uh, Body Slam isn't super effective, but Psychic Pokemon are so weak defensively, it essentially is super effective. Uh, this is actually going really, really, really well. As of this point in the video, despite the fact it wasn't great against Brock, Raticate is looking top tier, but where a lot of Pokemon tend to falter, if not in this next section, is at the Elite Four. I'm really hopeful Raticate does really well. It'd be really cool for an early Pokemon that you're supposed to use and then discard, kind of like Jagan and Fire Emblem. It's nice when those Pokemon are actually legitimately good for the entire run. And throughout Pokemon's history, there actually are many of those Pokemon like Talonflame, Staraptor, Heck, the Gen 5 speedrun uses Stoutland. 
So, yeah, I'm really hoping Graticate is really good, but I don't want to get my hopes up too, too high just yet. All right, so Sabrina, the biggest thing is outspeeding, which we do one shot. Do we one shot Mr. Mime? No, but fully paralyzed is pretty lucky. Venomoth, we don't one shot. Leech life is fine. And now we need to outspeed Alakazam. We don't, but it misses with Psywave. Then we paralyze it. We still have quick attack, which even if we didn't paralyze, it would have been fine. So, okay, that went really, really well. And I have a feeling Blaine's going to go pretty well too because we have Dig. Well, he leads with Growlithe. Unfortunately, Dig takes two turns, so it will be slightly longer than otherwise. But Growlithe is one shot. Ponyta is one shot. Rapidash we outspeed and is not one shot. Growl kind of sucks. I go for Body Slam and it doesn't even do 50. Then I go for Dig and I get a crit. Okay, <laughs> that works. That works. I wish I would have done that turn one. I was trying to paralyze it, but all right. That was annoying because of Growl, but fairly easy. Now Giovanni, most of his Pokemon are either Rock or Poison type, so we can just use Dig. I have a feeling this will be another first try victory. All right, so Giovanni leads with Rhyhorn. We do have Bubble Beam, and that will one-shot Rhyhorn. Dug Trio, we go for Dig. Nidoqueen Dig does more than Bubble Beam, but it's not going to be a one-shot. However, Body Slam will knock it out. We level up. We go for Dig. We're probably going to have to follow that up with Body Slam. And for Rhydon, we still have Bubble Beam. I'm probably going to replace that pretty soon with Ice Beam or Blizzard. But for now, Bubble Beam is perfectly fine. I've mentioned this in many of my videos, but saving TMs until the last moment is actually a really smart idea. This is why I like doing runs in Gen 5 and later, even though I barely do those runs. Because having unlimited TMs is way less stressful, but hey, it's just part of the game. Anyway, now we have to go battle Rival 6. Rival 5 was pretty easy, but Rival 6 has way better moves, especially on Blastoise. So this could be pretty tricky. Pidgeot outlevels us by 2, and it takes actually 3 Body Slams or 2 and a Quick Attack to knock it out. Bubble Beam one-shots Rhyhorn. Next comes out Growlithe. We go for Dig. It does one-shot. Execute probably won't be, and it goes for Poison Powder. We knock it out. Alakazam goes for Recover, which is really lucky because that means we can go for Quick Attack and knock it out, even though we didn't outspeed. And now Blastoise goes for Bite, misses Hydro Pump, but then hits with Bite. And it took four attacks to knock out Blastoise. So this is not looking good and is precisely what tends to go wrong towards the end with weaker Pokemon, which is that they just don't have the base stats to make up for the fact they're going to be severely underleveled. So we're going to just try again because why the heck not? We get through the first three Pokemon pretty easily. Poison Powder misses, which is kind of nice, but Psychic one-shots. Well, technically that wasn't a one-shot, but you get what I mean. After losing four more times, I decide, okay, we can use Rare Candies here, but let's be as efficient as possible. I had about 1,900 or so experience points. I don't remember exactly the number, but it was perfect for knocking out these Pokemon right here. We got the level up, and now I have 10 rare candies which I can use. And once I'm at level 56, as opposed to level 46, Rival 6 should be much, much easier. I mean, duh, I'm 10 levels higher. Okay, so he leads with Pidgeot, you know that already. And you can see, I mean, 10 levels makes a huge difference. It's now a two-shot, Rhyhorn was always a one-shot, Body Slam now one-shots Growlithe. Body Slam doesn't one-shot Execute. Poison Powder is probably better than Stun Spore, although Solar Beam would be the best. Bigger deal is we outspeed Alakazam. Blastoise is going to be a three as opposed to a four-shot, but with Hydro Pump, we would have lost had the rival not used a potion there. Now, in theory, I probably could have taught Thunderbolt, which I'm going to use versus Laura Lee anyway, and it would have been a second try victory at level 56, but... I'll take the first try victory here. It's not a huge deal. Speaking of Laura Lee, the Elite Four might be very difficult. I mean, Rival Six was pretty hard, and usually that's a good indication the Elite Four are going to be difficult. I have an idea what I want to do versus Laura Lee, versus Bruno, and versus Agatha. Lance is a bigger question mark for a bunch of reasons, and then the champion is going to be a harder version of Rival Six, which already was hard when I was underleveled, and I'm going to be underleveled again since I don't have 10 more rare candies to use. So that's pretty much it for the preamble. Let's go see how the Elite Four actually were. 
All right, so first things first, Lorelei leads with Dugong, and Body Slam looks like it's doing about half, but not quite. That's going to be a problem because after Dugong comes Cloyster, and yeah, what am I going to do? So this is a good time to delete Bubble Beam, which we don't really need anymore, and we can just teach Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt does way more damage to Cloyster with its much worse special than its defense. I didn't mean to save in front of Lorelei, that's kind of annoying, but... Whatever. Anyway, I use Thunderbolt, it goes for takedown, Body Slam seems to be the play versus Dugong, although after Growl, Thunderbolt is definitely the play. Now against Cloyster, I use Thunderbolt twice, and we knock it out. Then we can use Thunderbolt twice against Slowbro. Doesn't knock it out, mind you, but, you know, it does almost knock it out, and then Super Potion means I don't get attacked. Now against Jinx, Body Slam still does more damage. Jinx goes for Body Slam, but that means Lapras is going to knock me out with Blizzard. So, here's a bit of an issue about saving in front of Lorelei. I do have a plan here, but I'm going to have to lose to Lorelei in order to use that plan, because I don't have the TM with me, which is annoying, but as it turns out, really wasn't that big a deal because the Elite Four ended up being a lot more difficult than I had originally thought they would be. I look really close to knocking out Lorelei here. Jinx is a one-shot without Growl, but Hydro Pump, yeah. I'm just gonna take the White out and go get Mimic, and then this battle should be a lot more consistent. Alrighty, so we're gonna start the same way, Body Slam, Dugong, and potentially a 2 KO, although that crit may have mattered. Thunderbolt, that part's the same, but now against Slowbro, we're going to use Amnesia. Because Slowbro really only has Water Gun, not too worried about it attacking us. Growl is definitely a little annoying, but we can go for Thunderbolt, and because it used a bunch of Amnesias, it's not going to one-shot. Thunderbolt actually one-shots Jinx, which is pretty cool, and it one-shots Lapras unless we crit, but then the Amnesias should protect us from Blizzard or Hydro Pump. Now, against Bruno, I actually make a bit of a mistake here, but it ended up being not the biggest deal. We can use Dig against Onyx, but of course, if it uses Harden and X Defense, it could take a really long time, which is annoying. Against Hitmonchan, I decide to go for Mimic and Mimic Ice Punch to save time for later. And then I go for Body Slam, which is a 2 hit KO because Hitmonchan has good defense. Hitmonlee has slightly less good defense, but the crit mattered. Ice Punch on Onyx, and then I'm going to use Body Slam on Machamp, and it's a 2 hit KO. Now, normally, Agatha is the one I'm most worried about, but thankfully, with a Pokemon like Raticate, Agatha is actually a complete joke. Not because her moves can't hit me, they can, but because I outspeed and Dig is a one-shot. The only Pokemon it's not is Golbat, and of course, it hits with Confuse Ray. I hit myself in Confusion twice, but then it uses Haze, which in this game gets rid of Confusion. I knock out Haunter and level up, which is pretty good and then I'll one-shot Arbok with Dig, and I outspeed and one-shot the second Gengar. Even if it had outsped me, I would have still survived with 13 HP. But now we're on to Lance. So Lance has Dragon Pokemon, three of them, as well as Aerodactyl and Gyarados. Against Gyarados, we have Thunderbolt. Against the Dragon Pokemon, I don't need Mimic anymore, so I'm going to teach Blizzard. But is that going to be enough to actually defeat Lance? The answer? Well, I use Thunderbolt on Gyarados, it doesn't one-shot. That's frustrating because it goes for Hydro Pump, and that does a ton to me. Next comes out Dragonair, I go for Blizzard, it doesn't one-shot, and Hyper Beam does knock me out. So that's going to be a bit of an issue. I decide to level up a little bit more in the Fighting Dojo, so I'm at level 61 now. It's still not nearly enough, and I get hit by Hyper Beam. Dragonair, then I go for Body Slam, it's not any better. Slam, I do survive. Blizzard does one-shot the second Dragonair after the level up, but Aerodactyl actually outspeeds me and knocks me out. So, what are we going to do here? If you guessed level up a little bit more in Victory Road, you'd be correct. Now, Thunderbolt, I think the crit mattered there, but that pretty much guarantees a victory. We one-shot both Dragonair, and although we don't outspeed Aerodactyl, we also don't one-shot it, but we get extremely lucky with that supersonic miss. All we get hit with is Bite, and Dragonite's not very fast, so we will knock it out with Blizzard. This could have been an incredibly lucky battle, meaning we are really going to want to clutch the final battle, 
but I have a bad feeling after how difficult Rival 6 was. Let's see. So Pidgeot, I'm going to use Blizzard because it is more powerful. And of course, it mirror moves Blizzard, but thankfully I don't get frozen. And then I can knock it out with Thunderbolt, which has better accuracy. I do outspeed Alakazam and one shot with Body Slam. That's huge. If we're going to win, that's going to be a big moment. We also one shot Rhydon with Blizzard. But our canine, I'm not sure if Dig will do enough. It doesn't. Ember hits, but thankfully it doesn't burn. Thankfully, our canine has Ember. We knock it out with Body Slam. Executor, I go for Body Slam because it has such high special and thankfully Hypnosis misses. Body Slam's not a 2 KO, but it's fully paralyzed. We are getting some crazy good luck. I use Thunderbolt on Blastoise. It goes for Blizzard instead of Hydro Pump. And yeah, that's some really good luck in the last two battles. But a win is a win. Where to put this on the tier list, though? I mean, Raticate was pretty good, much better than Rattata. It actually beats the game pretty nicely. However, so do a lot of other Pokemon, and this is where it's important to understand that we're not saying Raticate is bad, but it is probably around the 28th best Pokemon. It's in that B tier, Pokemon that have a few hiccups here and there, but otherwise are pretty good. It's towards the bottom end because, well, it's level, it's time, and the luck involved in the last battle, because it could have taken me a little bit longer. But frankly, it's definitely not A tier. A tier Pokemon really don't struggle much of anywhere, maybe against Brock, but that's about it. So I think that's still pretty good for Raticate considering its base stats. Looking at the tier list so far, in the A tier, we don't have any huge surprises. But a lot of Pokemon that are generally considered weaker, like Butterfree and Raticate, have done really well in B tier. So that's definitely something they can be proud of. Anyway, I'm going to go be making more videos. Hope you enjoyed this solo run, and I'll be back pretty soon. Take care.